Hey everyone, my name is Matt and welcome back to the farm. While we're in the shop again today, we're going to work on the Farm All H project. In the last video, we took and put new bearings on the main input shaft assembly and put that all together uh, as far as I can go for now. We also put a new pilot bearing on the end of the main sliding gear shaft assembly. So in today's video, we're going to try to put some of these components back in the transmission housing and see how much we can get done. So the first thing we got to do before we start putting any components in here is I want to clean up any gasket surfaces on the outside that have paint on them or debris. So the last component out will be the first component to go in is this counter shaft assembly. This is the rear end of the shaft. Uh, these are the splines for your PTO assembly. We'll get into that later on when we put the PTO in. Uh, this is the roller bearing for the rear support of the shaft with a retaining ring that goes on. The front end of the shaft has this coupling assembly we'll put on as well. From what I remember, this wasn't exactly the most fun thing to get out of here. So we're gonna see how this goes in here. But it's kind of a snug fit. Well, it's down in there. So now I gotta get this bearing to go the rest of the way on this shaft. Uh, the only thing that retains this bearing to the shaft is the snap ring. There, that bearing seated the rest of the way. I had a block of wood in here up against this gear. So that way when I was driving on the shaft that way, uh, the shaft couldn't move. Uh, so that way every time I was hitting on the inner race of the bearing, it was an effective hit. So now we're gonna take See if we can't get this shaft and the bearing, rear bearing started in its bore and get the shaft slid in place. There. Now what keeps the shaft from moving uh, forward and back is the retainer that goes on here with the coupler. Uh, so that's gonna be the next assembly that we go to put on. So now we got the bearing in place that supports the main counter shaft. Next thing to go is this bearing retainer assembly. Uh, it has a couple different jobs. One, it holds the bearing in place. Two, there's a double lip seal in here. Uh, I have not got the new seal yet, so we're just gonna bolt this on temporarily to hold it in place. One thing to note, uh, like I said, with the input shaft housing assembly that goes right here, there's a drain hole that has to uh, correspond with the hole on the casting that any oil that passes through the bearing and a little bit of oil that lubricates the seal, any excess oil can drain down through, go through this uh, cutout in this housing and go back through this hole here. We got to make sure that gets put back oriented in the correct location. So we're just going to put this on here for now. One thing I do is I put all my bolts or any small parts in baggies and label them. So that way, two, three, seven, eight months later, I go back and I know exactly what bolts are for what. And there's no guessing games or anything like that.
Now that those bolts are snugged up, I'm just going to slide this collar in and thread that on a little bit. So I forgot when I took this apart, I kind of buggered up the end of the shaft just a little bit. So I had to take the bearing retainer back off and use a thread file and clean up the end of the shaft just a little bit. It wasn't a lot, but I was able to get this coupler to screw all the way on. And uh, so now we're good to go. I'm just going to put these on finger tight for now. Like I said before, I got to take this back off and put the gasket and uh, um, seal in there. So now we should be good to go getting this started. There, close enough for now. Spins over. No drag, we're good to go. So now that we got the counter shaft assembly in, we can put the reverse idler gear assembly in. Um, I had this labeled with a tag that said rear on this side and then a couple pieces of wire so this couldn't come out, so it couldn't get messed up. So I've taken all that off now. So now we're gonna see, get that out of there. That fell down in there, wonder where that went. We're going to get this put in place and uh, slide the shaft in from the rear. You got to make sure it's lined up and splined into the counter shaft, otherwise it won't slide in very easy. Won't line up right. There, that's in. Drop the bolt in, grab my half inch, oh, that's 9 sixteenths. <clears throat> there, that's tight. So now that we got the counter shaft in place and the idler, reverse idler assembly in place, I just like to rotate things, make sure everything spins freely. Every time I add a component, I always do that just to make sure there's no binding or you know if anything's changed since uh, adding that new component. Because uh, then if something did change, then you know you got a problem. So now we're back over here on the bench. We have our main sliding gear assembly, main shaft. Before we go putting this in, these are shims. They're different thicknesses. Uh, they go on this side of this bearing retainer. Uh, what these are used for is setting your backlash between your ring and pinion. And I'll go over that in a later video once we go putting the um, differential assembly into the tractor. But for right now, I'm going to put these back in the way they were. Uh, everything was all right before, so I would assume nothing has changed. So we just slide these on, get the stack somewhat oriented correctly, and... Well, somewhat down in. Get all these shims and everything all back in place. Now, see if we can't get this lined up. Go a little, little at a time on each side, all the way around. There, all these bolts are tight. All right, now that we got the main shaft in, we're gonna put the input shaft assembly in. We're gonna put the bearing retainer bolts in, just kind of finger tight again for now. So the drain hole on the casting is right here that we have to line up with the main housing here. So when we go to put that on, we gotta make sure it lines up with that hole. Got 
kind of get a couple bolts started here just to help locate everything before I push this in the rest of the way. Kind of want to just test fit everything here to make sure everything's going together all right and uh, before I go putting gaskets and seals on. So that way if there's any issues, I can take it back apart without messing up any gaskets or seals. There, those are all snug. All right, so now that we got the transmission gear sets all back in the housing, I wanna go through and make sure that everything functions like it ought to. We're gonna start right here at the beginning of the power flow coming into the transmission via the input shaft assembly. This gear here is for your belt pulley. It has no bearing on power flow through the transmission. Its sole job is to run the belt pulley when that is in operation on the tractor. This row of teeth is for running the counter shaft down below. They're in constant mesh all the time. And then later on, I'll explain what this set of teeth here is for. Right now we're in a neutral state. I'm gonna rotate this counterclockwise and you'll see how the input shaft and the counter shaft are rotating. You may also be able to see in the background that the reverse idler gear is also turning, but this main sliding gear set is not, that is neutral. So to achieve first gear, there's a shift fork that engages in this slot on the gear. Each one of these three gears has the same slot. When you shift the transmission in the first gear and you pull that on this Farmall H, you actually go all the way to the left and pull it back for first gear. You're actually pulling this gear forward into a gear down below on the counter shaft. And as I start to rotate this, you'll see the difference in speed, how the input shaft is spinning at a much higher rate than the driven gear or the main shaft of the transmission, the sliding gear set. That's first gear. So now if we take this out of first gear and slide this over into second gear, we're gonna spin it the same rotation, same speed, but now you'll see this main shaft has actually picked up speed a little bit. So now if we take this same gear that we ran for second gear and slide it the other way and rotate, now you'll see that this main shaft has picked up even more speed. That would be third gear. So with every, every change in gear size, depending on whether it's the, the drive gear or the driven gear, that changes your gear ratio and either speeds up or slows down the tractor. So now we're gonna slide this in the fourth gear, which theory of operation is the same for that as it is the other gears, but it just picks up even more speed. Now, when you go to fifth gear, that's where this set of teeth come into play. Fifth gear is actually when it's locked in place as a direct one-to-one -one drive ratio through the input shaft all the way out the main shaft and into the differential. This is a one-to-one -one gear ratio. They're locked together. You have no gear reduction going on through the rest of the transmission. So now that we have this back in a neutral state, I'll show you how the reverse operates. So right now you have the counter shaft below rotating the opposite direction as the input shaft. But if you'll notice, this reverse idler gear is actually rotating the same direction as the input shaft. This reverse idler gear is in always constant mesh as well to the counter shaft. So when you shift this into reverse, what happens is you slide this gear back and this gear now is in constant mesh with the reverse idler gear. Now what happens is it changes the direction of the main output shaft of the transmission. So by changing 
the direction of rotation down here with the reverse idler gear, you're changing the direction of the transmission output shaft. We'll shift this back into neutral, and now we have a neutral state again. So that's the theory of operation on how a simple transmission works and most of any year old antique tractors. You know, there really isn't much in the way of variation from manufacturer to manufacturer, but I know at least the farm malls, this is pretty much how they do it. So other than a few gaskets and seals, uh, I'd say that's a wrap as far as the transmission goes. Uh, next, we're gonna move into the differential and bull pinion housings. And then we'll follow that up last but not least with the axle shafts, uh, bull gears and PTO assembly. So we hope you like this kind of content. I know that you know the mechanical videos um, are a different viewer base than the farming videos, but at least on our farm, you know the two go hand in hand. Uh, the antique tractors were around before we started farming, and we've taken our passion for farming and brought our hobby of antique tractors into it, and we've married the two together real well, and it just fits on our farm, and that's what we do. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like our channel, please subscribe. We hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time.